The Life of Dr. Jiro from Dragon Ball. Dr. Jiro, also known as Android 20, is a major supporting antagonist in the Dragon Ball franchise, appearing in the Dragon Ball manga and the animes Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT. He is a genius scientist who is the mastermind behind the Red Ribbon Androids, chief amongst them the bioorganic cell. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Dr. Jiro. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. We've noticed that a lot of our viewers aren't actually subscribed to the channel. This is likely thanks to YouTube giving you the recommendations that you like to watch, but if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos, and if you want to support the Amagi, make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much. Background He fathered two children with his wife Vomi, one of whom was named Jevo. Dr. Jero is the head scientist of the Red Ribbon Army. He was a founding member of the Red Ribbon Army to begin with and was also effectively in control. He designed the Red Ribbon's weaponry and created the first androids in the service of the Red Ribbon Army. He built androids because mechs can be captured and used by the enemy, while androids can think for themselves. Another scientist, Dr. Flap, is named as Android 8's creator. Daisenshu 7 addresses this inconsistency by stating that Dr. Flap and Dr. Jiro were colleagues in charge of the Red Ribbon Army's Android development program. The Red Ribbon Army is not the primary reason for Dr. Jiro's desire to create androids and cyborgs, as he reveals in GT that he always dreamed of replacing the entire human race with artificial beings, even before Goku defeated the Red Ribbon Army. After the Red Ribbon Army is defeated by Goku, Dr. Jiro goes into hiding in his laboratory, located in a mountain area north of North City. In this lab, he strives to create the ultimate fighting machine, with continued funding courtesy of Magenta. Using an extremely intelligent tracking device disguised as a ladybug, he studies Goku and the Z Fighters for years, observing the fights Goku has with Tian Shin Han, King Piccolo, Piccolo, and the Saiyans Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta. Jiro modeled the powerful Android 16 after his dead son Javo. At one point, Dr. Jiro brought home a doll decorating the command center of an enemy base as a trophy, which he later used as a model to design Android 19. Dr. Jiro ceases the study of Goku's power when the Saiyan leaves for Namek, believing he has already compiled enough information, so he simply adjusts the android's power levels to accommodate for Goku's expected power increase, not accounting for the power level of Goku's Super Saiyan form. Believing he had created the ultimate fighting machines, he finalizes his plans and constructed a series of androids. Android 16 was modeled on Jiro's dead son, a high-ranking Red Ribbon soldier long ago felled by an enemy bullet. In his affection, Jiro made him powerful but did not want him to be destroyed in battle, so he made him gentle. While looking for fresh material for his experiments, Dr. Jiro meets two notorious delinquents by chance, two siblings, a boy and a girl. He then kidnaps them and restructures them into Android 17 and Android 18. However, the two became rebellious as they retained their human free will, so he deactivated them. According to Android 18, Dr. Jiro destroyed all the other androids up to Android 15. 1 to 7 and 9 through 12 were completely artificial, but Dr. Jiro could not control their personalities. Too dark, too stupid, too nice, etc. Android 19 was modeled after a doll decorating the command center of an enemy base, which Dr. Jiro brought home as a trophy. To become immortal, Dr. Jiro has Android 19 turn him into an android, Android 20. The only human part of him as an android is his brain, which was transplanted into his android body by 19. Dr. Jiro has his brain transferred into an energy-absorbing model android rather than an infinite powered model, which would have allowed him far greater power reserves. Android 18 hints that it may have been because he thinks that an energy-absorbing model android is easier to use as a host. Jiro would later disguise his true identity by claiming that he is merely Android 20 and that Jiro had died long ago. While constructing the androids, Dr. Jiro discovers a way to fuse together the cells from the strongest warriors to walk the Earth, Goku, Piccolo, Vegeta, Frieza, and King Cold, and tries to create a supreme fighting entity. After realizing that his project would take too long to complete, he decides to turn his attention to other matters and leave his supercomputer from his lab to complete the ultimate being, who he names Cell. Cell later speculated that Dr. Jiro created him to defeat the Earth, and later to destroy the entire universe. 
Android Saga. Two years after Namek's destruction, after easily slaughtering Frieza, his soldiers, and his father, Future Trunks informs the Z Fighters that two extremely powerful androids created by Jiro will appear in three years. Three years later, on May 12th of age 767, at 10 o'clock AM, two androids appear on an island nine miles southwest of South City, Android 19 and Android 20. They attack Yajirobe in his hover car, shortly after the latter gives the Z Fighters a sack of Senzu beans and descend into the city. Together they start a killing spree and do not show any mercy or regret. During one point, number 20 grabs a man from his car and crushes his skull like a grape, never changing his stoic expression. The Z Fighters struggle to find them due to the androids having no key, but Yamcha is the first to find them, attracted to the scene by the scream of a woman. They then ambush him and Yamcha, initially believing them to be two civilians and trying to tell them to evacuate until he noticed the red ribbon logo on Android 20's cap, with Android 20 smugly confirming that they are the androids he's referring to. Before Yamcha can act, Android 20 demonstrates a deadly power. Dr. Jiro's latest design for androids, an energy absorbing function. Using a small red jewel embedded in his hand, he grabs Yamcha by the jaw, punches a hole through his chest, and saps his life force. Goku, Piccolo, Krillin, and Tian Shin Han detect Yamcha's fast dropping energy and find him fatally injured by Android 20. Krillin takes the dying Yamcha back to Bulma for a Senzu bean. Android 20 is surprised that the Z Fighters knew that he and 19 were androids even though they gave no indication. He also says that the Z Fighters also seem to know where he and Android 19 would be and gathered in anticipation. Number 20 asks how this is possible, but Piccolo refuses, saying that they will have to obtain the information by force. Android 20 says that they will do just that. However, Goku suggests that they move to another location since there are too many innocent people around. Android 20 takes it as meaning that he doesn't want anyone to get in the way and single-handedly destroys half of the city and its populace with his bionic punisher. An enraged Goku tells the android to stop and charges in, hitting Android 20 in the head with a punch and knocking off his hat in the process, revealing a seemingly organic brain is revealed underneath. Android 20 detects that Goku is unsatisfied with his solution to finding an uninhabited place. Android 19 says the Z Fighters will be unable to defeat them no matter where they fight, but Android 20 tells Goku to choose his place of death, calling him by name. Piccolo wonders how Android 20 knows Goku's name, and Android 20 says that he knows them all, naming Piccolo and Tien as well. Police sirens are heard approaching, and Goku says that they can ask questions later and takes off. The androids, Piccolo and Tien, follow them. As the group with the androids flies over a deserted plane, Android 20 says they will fight there because it's adequate for that purpose. Goku does not object and the group lands. Piccolo realizes that the plane is surrounded by rocky mountains and that the androids are planning on hiding among these if necessary. Android 20 begins to explain to Goku that they've been watching his battles with miniature surveillance drones ever since he defeated the Red Ribbon Army, looking for a weakness. 20 says that only the humiliated Dr. Jiro remained after the army's defeat, and Piccolo says that 20 is talking as if he was Jiro himself. 20 lies, saying that he is the creation of Dr. Jiro and that the doctor himself is no longer alive. Goku then asks if they observed his battles on planet Namek, and Android 20 responds that they had sufficient data by that time, thus it was unnecessary, as the android's power levels were adjusted to accommodate for Goku's expected power increase. Goku tells Android 20 that he's missed something. Android 20 and Android 19 are surprised to hear this, and Piccolo says that it is a fatal mistake not to know about the Super Saiyan. Goku then powers up and transforms, and the burst of ki alerts Gohan, Krillin, and Yamcha to the location of the battle. 20 admits that Goku has far exceeded his calculated limits, however he says that 19 can still handle Goku. Goku says that he will find that out for himself and charges into battle. Goku, at the start, does well in the fight, completely overwhelming Android 19. Android 20 is concerned that 19 will run out of energy before he can absorb any of Goku's power. However, the Saiyan's heart virus manifests at that exact moment and hinders his performance. Goku, visibly exhausted, decides to try to finish 19 with a Kamehameha. Upon seeing the blast, 19 and 20 are overjoyed, and 19 simply absorbs the blast with his right hand. 20 notes that 19's power has increased while Goku's has dramatically decreased. Krillin gives Goku a Senzu bean, hoping it will help him. Android 20 realizes that the bean is indeed the legendary Senzu, and Yamcha is now again optimistic about Goku's chances. However, the Senzu did not cure Goku's illness, and the Saiyan can no longer maintain his Super Saiyan form. 
19 jumps, landing on Goku's chest and grabbing him by the neck to absorb his energy. The rest of the Z Fighters fly forward to help Goku, however they are intercepted by Android 20, who tells them that they will not intervene in the battle and warns them to try at their own peril. Piccolo says that he will and kicks at 20, but 20 dodges and hits Piccolo with eye lasers. Piccolo falls to the ground and 20 says that his actions were bold but stupid. Before Goku can be killed, Vegeta saves him by kicking 19 in the face, declaring that he will be the only one to kill Goku. The Z Fighters and the androids are both stunned by the sudden appearance of Vegeta. Piccolo, lying on the ground, suddenly gets up. He reveals that he was simply faking defeat in order for the android to let his guard down, telling Gohan that it would take more than one blast to beat him. Vegeta says that he saw everything and tells Goku that he's a fool for turning Super Saiyan even though he noticed the anomaly in his body, and kicks him forward into the air. Piccolo grabs him and Vegeta says that someone should drag Goku home and give him the heart medicine. Yamcha says that he will as he seems to be the least useful one there. Piccolo tells Yamcha to take some of the medicine as well as the virus could be contagious. As Yamcha flies off with Goku, Android 19 watches and prepares to give chase, but Android 20 tells him not to, as it could be fun to save the best, Goku for last. 20 says that they can take care of the rest of the Z Fighters now, and that things will be more interesting since Vegeta has joined them. 19 asks if he can kill Vegeta, and 20 agrees after calling him greedy and saying that in exchange he'll take the other four. Vegeta tells 19 that from his observations, the androids are not as strong as they were said to be. He tells 19 that he knows about their energy absorption through the palms, but 19 replies that he already knows Vegeta's abilities. Vegeta says that Saiyans cannot be reduced to numbers and wonders if androids can feel fear, and then transforms into a Super Saiyan. The Z Fighters and androids are both surprised at this development, and Krillin says that he thought a Super Saiyan had to have a pure heart. Vegeta either says that his heart is pure, but pure evil, or tells how he endured a brutal training regimen before reaching his own limits and became a Super Saiyan due to his rage against himself. Android 20 tells Vegeta that he is still no match for them and 19 charges towards Vegeta. Android 20 can only watch in horror as Vegeta aggressively beats 19 around. Terrified, Android 19 scrambles out of the crater and begins to run away. Vegeta rises into the air and prepares to destroy 19 while 20 verbally intercedes, demanding that he stop. Vegeta tells him that he'll deal with him after. After powering up sufficiently, Vegeta unleashes a big bang attack on the fleeing android, which creates a massive explosion, stunning the onlookers. When the smoke clears, only Android 19's head remains. Vegeta lands near Android 20 and powers down to his base form, and tells Android 20 that he's lost a lot of energy and that this is his chance to defeat him. Android 20 wonders what sort of trick Vegeta's trying to pull. Vegeta asks why Android 20 said he had no hope, and Android 20 tells Vegeta that even though he has exceeded their calculations, he is more powerful. Vegeta asks 20 to show him. Intimidated, Android 20 then runs away, heading for the nearby rocks as Piccolo had feared earlier. Android 20 quickly hides from a rejuvenated Super Saiyan Vegeta and watches him from a distance. Impatient and tired of searching, Vegeta decides to flush 20 out by destroying some of the area, so he flies into the air and throws a photon bomber towards the ground. Krillin yells for him to stop as the rest of the team could get caught in the blast. Seeing his chance, Android 20 steps in front of the blast and absorbs it through his palms. Seeing this, Vegeta immediately flies towards 20, who quickly disappears. Vegeta chases after him, but is upset to discover that 20 is quicker and managed to get out of his sight. Android 20, watching Vegeta from above, says that he's become too dependent on tracking Ki and lost his eye for movement. However, he admits that he did not count on so much power from Vegeta. Although he believes the most logical option is to return to his lab, he wants to avoid that if at all possible. He then spots Gohan, Tien, Piccolo, and Krillin searching for him and decides to steal their energy in order to become powerful enough to defeat Vegeta. Android 20 decides to attack Piccolo first as he is the strongest after Vegeta. He ambushes Piccolo from behind to absorb his energy and covers his mouth so he cannot call for help. 20 tells Piccolo that the others cannot see them as he knows where they all are. However, Piccolo telepathically calls out to Gohan who detects the constant decrease in his ki and flies over to help. As Android 20 tells Piccolo that he's almost out of energy, Gohan arrives and hits Android 20 from behind, knocking him off Piccolo. This also knocks off the android's hat. Krillin, Tian Shin Han, and Vegeta sense Gohan's ki and surround Android 20 upon reaching the area. Android 20 is surprised at the arrival of the other Z Fighters, but decides to stall for time and absorb more energy from the others before fighting Vegeta. Gohan tells Krillin to give Piccolo a senzu bean, which he does. Piccolo then descends down to face Android 20, removing his weighted clothing. 
He tells Vegeta not to interfere because he wants to face Android 20 personally. Vegeta responds that he does not care if Piccolo gets killed, but says that he will only be giving Android 20 more energy. Android 20 thinks to himself that this is another chance to absorb more of Piccolo's energy, but Piccolo quickly disappears from his sight and knees him in the face. He tries to fight Piccolo head on, but Piccolo is superior by far as a result of the three years of intense training with Goku and also the fusion with Nail. Piccolo mercilessly severs the android's right arm and prepares to destroy him but is distracted by the arrival of future trunks. Believing he has miscalculated too much, Android 20 decides to retreat into his lab in order to activate 17 and 18, though he laments that he cannot fly away without being spotted and decides to run away on foot. Suddenly, Bulma arrives by airplane with Yajirobe and the present infant version of Trunks in tow. Seeing an opportunity to escape, 20 declares that 17 and 18 will come and avenge his defeat, before firing a large photon wave at Bulma's plane. With a cloud of smoke and dust covering his tracks, Android 20 runs away into the Rocky Mountains. Having recognized him as Dr. Jiro, Bulma notifies the Z-Warriors about the approximate area of his laboratory and they depart for the mountains near North City. Vegeta, more overconfident than usual thanks to his new Super Saiyan power, goes off on his own to challenge the androids, so the rest of the group becomes determined to find Jiro or his lab before Vegeta does. Meanwhile, as he hides among the rocks, Dr. Jiro sees Vegeta and then future Trunks fly overhead in the direction of his lab. He initially thinks that it must be a coincidence and that they cannot know its location because only a handful of scientists know that. Thinking back, he recognizes Goku's close friend, Bulma, as the heir to Capsule Corporation, and thinks that she may have learned about him through her father. Suddenly, he sees Piccolo, Krillin, and Tian Shin Han flying in the same direction, and realizes that they are indeed heading for his lab to destroy 17 and 18 before he can activate them. He heads off after them, thinking that their need to find its precise location will give him enough time. In the anime, as he approaches his lab, Jiro senses Krillin nearby and ambushes him. Before he can kill Krillin, Jiro senses Piccolo nearby and decides to spare him in his hurry and activate his androids. Dr. Jiro quickly reaches his lab and leaps up into the cave which houses it. As he is about to enter, however, his sensors detect something and he turns around to see Krillin looking at him. Jiro thinks that Krillin will not be able to do anything and opens the door to his lab. He then tells Krillin that even if he calls the others, it will be too late now. Krillin then raises his key and Piccolo, Tien, Vegeta, and Trunks all sense it. Jiro, inside of his lab, says that he would have preferred not to activate 17 and 18, but that he had no choice now and hopes that he has made them obedient. He then activates Android 17 while holding his shutdown remote. After awakening, Android 17 says good morning to Dr. Jiro. When Jiro comments on his politeness, Android 17 says that Jiro is his creator, though he eyes the remote. Relieved that Android 17 appears to be operating properly, in Dragon Ball Z Kai, Jiro believes he successfully reprogrammed 17's personality. Jiro then activates Android 18. Android 18 is polite to Jiro as well, though she also eyes the remote. She comments on the fact that Jiro has made himself into an android, and Jiro says that he wanted eternal life. He also says that he previously devoted too much time to their infinite energy reactor. In Dragon Ball Z Kai, Jiro explains that in order for their infinite energy reactors to function, he had to disable their behavioral limiters wired into their firmware and that they would not obey him. He then relates the news that the Z Fighters are en route and tells the twin androids to kill them all, which they agree to do. The Z Fighters soon arrive and begin attempting to break in. This momentarily distracts Jiro and 17 steals the remote. Much to Jiro's horror, he then crushes the remote and tells Jiro that he will not put them to sleep again. Suddenly, Vegeta blasts the door down and the androids are surrounded by the Z Fighters. Dr. Jiro tells Android 18 and Android 17 to kill the Z Fighters, mentioning that they destroyed Android 19 and almost killed him. Android 17 asks if 19 was an energy absorption model and the one who converted him into an android, and Jiro replies that he was. Android 18 asks if Jiro went back to the old energy absorption model on a more recent android because infinite energy models like she and 17 were too powerful to control. Dr. Jiro tells him that it does not matter now and orders the pair to kill the Z Fighters, but 17 says that they will fight when they want. Jiro is even more upset when Android 18 begins inspecting a chamber labeled 16. Android 18 notices that 16 is also an infinite energy model and asks how this android inside is different from them, but Jiro tells her to get away from 16's chamber. Android 17 tells Android 18 to activate Android 16, but Jiro tells him not to, as 16 was a failure and would put the entire world at risk. Android 18 questions why he kept 16 around, and Jiro says that he was planning on fixing him later. 
Android 17 says he has a much higher power rating than Android 16, and tells Android 18 to activate him. Jero calls the pair failures and says he will deactivate them all for good. Android 17 reminds him that the remote is destroyed, but Jero says he can build another. Once more, he yells at Android 18 not to activate 16, but suddenly 17 brutally murders Jero by impaling him from behind with his arm, decapitating him with a swift kick, and then stepping on Jero's still living head. His remains are later destroyed, along with what seems to be the rest of his laboratory at the hands of future Trunks, when he fires the Buster Cannon with the intention of destroying Android 17 and 18. Majin Buu Saga Along with Cell, Frieza, King Cold, and the Ginyu Force, Dr. Juro watches the final battle between Goku and Kid Buu, being one of the very few people cheering for Kid Buu. Super 17 Saga Dr. Juro is first seen in Dragon Ball GT in Hell, greeting Dr. Mew after Mew is destroyed by Baby. There, the two scientists work on a plan to create the ultimate android which could destroy Goku. They come up with a plan to combine both of their technologies and achieve the perfect android by fusing Hellfighter 17 and Android 17 to create Super 17. They then created a dimensional hole to get both androids in the same place, Earth. On Earth, while Super 17 is engaged in combat with Vegeta, Gohan, Trunks, Goten, and Majub, Pan sneakily grabs Dr. Juro from behind to make Super 17 stop attacking Vegeta. The Doctor does, but the terrifying creation turns to him. It turned out that Dr. Mew reprogrammed Super 17 to only obey him. In an ironic twist of fate, Dr. Juro meets his end at the hands of 17 again. Super Android 13 Dr. Jero's death at the hands of androids 17 and 18 is shown at the start of the film. After his death, his hatred transferred to his computer, which completed androids 14, 15, and 13. In addition, he was also given several mentions in the film itself, mostly in relation to androids 13, 14, and 15 and their vendetta against Goku. The Funimation dub also has Goku, upon deducing 14 and 15 status as Jiro's androids, claiming that Jiro must be getting old due to the apparent lacking in physical quality to them. In the Funimation dub, Dr. Jiro's supercomputer also proceeds to speak with Dr. Jiro's voice, whereas the Japanese version merely implies that the supercomputer was acting in Jiro's name. Superhero Dr. Jero was seen in the opening sequence detailing his survival during the Red Ribbon Army's downfall at Goku's hands and attempt at revenge only to be killed by Android 17. Red Ribbon Army Saga Dr. Jero briefly appears during the Battle of Muscle Tower. Though he is not present at the tower, he watches Android 8 betray the Red Ribbon Army and starts planning Android 17 and 18. Ironically, Jero in this particular SD comic resembles the Parsley City Old Man. Fortune Teller Baba Saga Dr. Jero appears in the second bonus chapter for Dragon Ball SD. After defeating Future Cell, Future Trunks travels even further back in time in order to stop Jero from making the androids in the first place. As Future Trunks arrives, Jero is attempting to lure the girl who would eventually become Android 18 to him with a lollipop. Future Trunks attacks, but at that moment, Kid Goku and Krillin arrive. Jiro sends out Android 9 to fight them, but Goku defeats him with a single kick. Dr. Jiro promises never to cause trouble again, but later goes back on his word by swearing revenge on Goku once again, causing Future Trunks' trip to be for nothing, as the future carries on as it would anyway. Super Sonic Warriors it's shown in Cell's scenario that Jero manages to survive the encounter in his laboratory due to a backup plan. On the day of the announcement of the Cell games, Jero is amazed that Cell has come back from the future and went to gain his support in realizing the dream of the Red Ribbon Army. Only for Cell to reveal that he did not care for Jero's plans. Angry at his rebellion, Jero fights against Cell and is defeated. Jiro then says that he's surprised at how strong Cell has become before he's destroyed once more. Dark Empire Saga Strengthened Dr. Jiro appears with his brainwashed androids during Age 767, working with the Dark Empire as they search for Xeno Cell, though he is defeated by the Time Patrol. Fusions during sub-event Justice's Little Ally, Android 20 leads 19, 18, and 17 in an attack on Satan's city, though they're driven off by Oob, causing the androids to split up into pairs. 20 teams up with 19. 
Oob asks Tekka's team to help him track down one of the pairs. If they decide to go after the old man and the fatty, they will be forced to take down 19 and 20. 20 is shocked by the power of Tekka, Kid Goku, Kid Trunks, Goten, and Pan, causing him to wonder if his detection system is malfunctioning, only for 19 to point out that it is not as he is picking up the same readings. Dr. Jiro decides to fight Tekka's team to absorb their energy, but is defeated much to his disbelief. If they go after 17 and 18 instead, 19 and 20 are defeated by Oob. Android 20 slash Dr. Jiro can be recruited by KOing him with a Zenkai attack. He appears as the leader of a strong enemy team composed of himself, 19, 33, 44, and 76, which appears on top of a cliff overlooking the future Capsule Corporation in Area 3F. Fighters. Dr. Jiro is revealed to have had other secret labs, one of which contained another supercomputer he had programmed to develop Android 21. Additionally, it is revealed he created a system capable of linking human or artificial souls to another person, allowing them to control that person's body. He also developed a machine capable of generating waves, capable of suppressing the power of most fighters. His labs could also be used to create mindless clones as a makeshift army. Though his exact reasons for commissioning Android 21 are unconfirmed, various characters conclude his intentions were to have her lead a resurgent Red Ribbon army to conquer Earth and presumably the universe using his labs and inventions. Kakarot Goku uses the power of the Dragon Balls to bring both Dr. Jiro and Android 19 back to life. If the player goes to their location, Goku, seemingly not bearing a grudge against Jiro, greets both him and 19 and asks if they're training. Jiro, confused over Goku's statement, takes it as an insult, even when Goku clarifies that he did not mean it as such. When Goku brings Aider, Jiro realizes he's talking about Android 8 and proceeds to mock him, claiming that out of all of his failed creations, he is without a doubt the worst of them all, which enrages the Saiyan. Both Jiro and 19 challenge Goku, but are easily taken down thanks to Goku's power having increased since then. Jiro is frustrated over his loss and makes it clear to Goku that he will create a machine strong enough to kill him. The Saiyan, liking a challenge, allows Jiro to work on his new android in peace. Did you enjoy our video? Well then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.